Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions. Another day, another hard drive enclosure review. <laughs> I had this terrible thing happen to me yesterday and let it be a lesson learned to all of you to not do what I did. I have a, a Zeus store NAS and all my backups of my Mac Pro were on there, not my Mac mini. So the only way I could get four NVMEs to load up this thing was to pull them from the NAS because I just didn't want to spend the money to do one quick review on a bunch of NVMEs. So I pulled them out Loaded up the new enclosure, but to my dismay, I only had three NVMEs in my NAS. So I had to pull one out of my Mac Mini Backup, which is another Acasis enclosure that fits two NVMEs. So they were in a RAID 0. I pulled one of those. That was my Mac Mini Backup. So now I've basically got no backups of any of my stuff, except for what I have in my closet and my photos and all, you know, all that stuff. But my basic Mac backups are now erased because I thought, you know, I can get by with a day with no backups and then I'll just re-backup everything once I go through this review. And a little voice in my head said, you should probably back up your Mac Mini's time machine before erasing it. I should have listened. So I loaded the thing up with NVMEs I plugged it in and I don't know what happened, but it zapped my home folder, which was in a RAID 0, which I do not recommend doing that. I have a video on it. I was getting 10,000 megabytes per second. It was working great until that happened. And not only did I zap it somehow, I could not fix it. I could not get the data back. I could not rebuild the RAID. So basically I had to wipe it and start my Mac mini home folder journey all over again. Recently, I was thinking I really should get off this RAID 0 scenario for my Mac Mini. There's really no purpose to have 10,000 megabytes per second running on your Mac Mini unless it's an external setup, you know, but not your home folder. So I wanted to go back to one of the Acasis Thunderbolt 5 drives that gets 6,000 megabytes per second and just have my setup on that. I'm back up and running, as you can see, on my Mac Mini. And, you know, I don't think it was the enclosure's fault. I just zapped it with static electricity, which I have seen that in the past. One good zap can kill an external SSD. Lesson learned about that as well. This is not gonna be a very positive review. I don't really know who this thing is for. This is a weird enclosure. You got four NVMEs and you got a really loud fan. Wow. It is noisy. I would want RAID 5 with this setup and it doesn't support RAID 5. So you can do RAID 0 and you can do J-O-B, just a bunch of disks, and you can do RAID 1 where you can back up to another drive so the two drives are identical. But for me, the point of something like this would be to get one big disk and then if a drive fails, you can pull it and put in a new disk. But it does not support RAID 5, which is what RAID 5 does. So I'm torn as to what to do with this thing. I'm going to be putting my NVMEs back in my Azus Store NAS and get that back up and running, which that in itself is a big pain in the ass. Basically, I have hadn't gotten that quite the way I wanted it. I want all my computers to back up to that because it is a RAID 5 and now I'm going to have six two terabyte NVMEs in there. So I've been wanting to do that. So this is kind of forcing me to do it. So here is Blackmagic Speed Disk Test with a single drive. And here we are with a RAID 0 configuration of two of the drives in the enclosure. And we're still only getting the exact same speeds. There's no increase in speed so there's no real reason to use RAID 0 because it's more risky and you're not increasing your speeds. You really need two separate drives connected to two ports on the Mac Mini to take advantage of the RAID 0 and double your read and write speeds. And here is J-O-B, just a bunch of disks, which basically puts them all into one large disk. Also very risky because if one goes down, all of them go down. 
And finally, we have a RAID 1 configuration with two of the NVMEs and a RAID 1, and we're getting about a thousand less on the write speeds and the same on the read. So you take a hit to get that redundancy, but each drive is identical. So if one goes down, you can always rebuild the RAID by replacing the drive that went bad and you'll be up and running. So I thought I'd do a 185 gig Final Cut Pro project test and wrote it to one of the single drives first and it did it in three minutes it was pretty quick and it didn't throttle it dropped down in speed for a little bit and then picked back up and you know final cut projects have little files in there and that'll slow things down but overall it did it pretty quickly three minutes um, and averaged about 1.2 gigs per second. And then I copied the same data off the single drive to the RAID 1. So the data is going to both NVMEs at the same time. And it did pretty well. It took about, you know, maybe 20 seconds longer, but pretty good considering you're writing the same data to both drives. And then I did the RAID 0 with the 185 gigs and with various stuff in there. It wasn't just a Final Cut project, actually. It had a user account with a bunch of little files, you know, the system library, things of that nature. So it's bound to drop in speed when you're writing a bunch of small files. But then it picked back up and got back to the 1.8 gigs. And that's pretty good. So, you know, obviously the fan helps keep it cool. And it kept up the high speeds for a long sustained right so you know performance is about what it should be and I just thought we'd do a temperature test to see how the fan keeps these NVMEs cool I mean there are four in a box so that could get warm but they seem to really keep um, a low temperature we're writing the 185 gigs to the RAID 0 again RAID 0 always runs hotter than a single disk and so far you know it's really keeping a pretty low temperature it never really goes over 48 I think is the highest we got and you really have to get up over 60 more like 80 to throttle an NVMe and the team group NVMEs run cooler than something like a Samsung 990 Pro and the team group MP44Ls do not have DRAM cache. They use host memory buffer and PSLC cache. And they come in a little bit cheaper than a Samsung and the Western Digital. And so far for me, they've worked great. Another thing is there's no activity LEDs. There are holes for them on the enclosure, but they don't do anything. There's no lights happening when they're reading and writing or when they mount. Just the power light is all there is. And even this guy in their ad doesn't know what to do with it. I guess he prefers the power button on the top because he has it on his desk upside down. I did forget to mention that you can daisy chain these units or connect another external hard drive, but you cannot connect a monitor off it. But if you're looking for a drive that can handle a lot of NVMe storage up to 32 terabytes, this may be an enclosure for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'm sure you'll have a few to say about my blender. And I love Acasa stuff. I've been using their 21-in-1 Thunderbolt 4 dock for like five months now and that thing has been rock solid. I love it. And I love the TB501 Pro. That's got my home folder on it. I'm running everything off of that. I do my video editing off of it. 6,000 megabytes per second. I think the EC3901 could be dedicated to my Mac Pro and I could load it up with more NVMEs when I can afford to get them. And that could be a viable use case for this box because my Mac Pro is in a closet and I wouldn't hear the fan noise, but I wouldn't want this thing on my desk in front of me and you need to be aware of static electricity because that can really zap your external drive if it's got a metal enclosure and don't erase your backups to make a video lesson learned i was being lazy and it cost me thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel give me that thumbs up and i'll see you on the next max sound solutions video